How long did you take? All right. Nice one. We went higher than last time. My name is Dr. Mike Lang. As both a health researcher and adventure guide, I've seen how spending time outdoors can enhance the well-being of family caregivers. Both Lisa and Curtis have never ice climbed before, and they have another connection. Both are raising a child with Down syndrome. Curtis is also the director of a program that helps families prepare their children for school, and Lisa is just about to begin that process with her daughter. Together, we hope to learn how to overcome our fears on a frozen waterfall and when caring for children with unique needs. This is Caregivers in the Wild. Oh, that's cool. Hi. Look at this. This is cool. That's way bigger than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, we're going to kind of do a little walk around to practice being comfortable on our crampons, on flat, sloped ice, and everything in between. And then we'll get to vertical ice once we start to climb. It's definitely a different way of walking. <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna bring it back. Oh. Swing through my shoulder. Oh. <laughs> that was a good one. My daughter Raven was diagnosed with Down syndrome just after she was born. We, we knew what it meant, but we didn't understand what it would all involve. So while we had our many tears of just like, what does this look like? There was a lot of things that we found really comforting in just kind of acknowledging that you never know what you're going to get. You never know how your child's going to grow up. So she's now four and a half. And of course, like compared to a typical child, she walked a little later. She's still working on her words, but She's bright and she's adventurous and she's curious and she almost has like no fear of anything. Like she's so in the moment that I can feel myself um, protective and fearful of really letting her out there into the world. High fives all around, Curtis. High fives all around. <laughs> so, so what was it like to, for, your, for your climbs? It was definitely hard. It was super challenging. Yeah, it's like... It's a different feeling for sure. Most of the time, nothing of your body is actually in, in contact with the wall. Yeah, <laughs> and you just true. like, And when you think about that, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. Like, of course I was hanging on too hard, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't consider myself a helicopter mom, but I was, I know Raven and she's, she's busy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's challenging just knowing where she's at and, and knowing that boundary of letting her be the free spirit that she is, but keep her safe. Mm -hmm. Because what's an example of where your where your heart sort of stops a little bit as a mom, and you're sort of like, ah. Uh, oh, she uh. runs away. She runs away. She runs away. Yeah. Does Jake run oh, away? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like going to the park, puts her boots on, leaves. It's a, it's a real fear. Like we've lost Jake, and it's been very scary. <laughs> and <laughs> we've got people looking for him, and a lot of caregivers, like myself too. It's that like I don't think you often realize how much energy it takes to be on alert yeah. all the time, right? Like yeah. you're constantly in the back of your head thinking, okay, where are they right now? Are they safe? Is the door locked? What are they up to? It's a little too quiet right now. It's mm -hmm. like, and so it's that constant state of being alert and having to know where are they? What are they up to? It, I think a lot of people don't realize how exhausting yeah. it is. more ice up here. It's just around the corner now. Whoa. That is amazing. Yeah, that's about 80 feet of water. Yeah, it is. So is it pretty different every time you come up here? Oh, very. Yeah? Yeah, this wall changes like significantly. Hmm. Even yeah. from like one week to the next. So who's going first? <laughs> I'll go first. I'm ready. You ready? I think so. Sure. All right. Yeah. Get your climb on. All right, Lisa. Here we go. You got this. You are on the leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good technique. Look at that. How's it feeling? Oh, it really didn't hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah take a break. <laughs> are you going all the way? I don't know. You're getting close. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So close! 
Look at that! Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Powering through. Yes! That's awesome. Yeah! Woo you Nicely just done, went for Lisa. it. Are you kidding me? That was amazing. Hey! <laughs> a line that I use with myself and when I, when I talk with other families who have kids with Down syndrome, I use it a lot too, is the, you know, it's check your nose. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're saying no to something, like where is that no coming from? Like, is it coming out of a place of fear or because you're tired or you don't think that they'll be successful or, you know, where is that no coming from? And check that. We so often, I think, can default to just saying, no, no, it's too dangerous, it's too this, it's too that. Um, so how do you overcome that? And maybe I can turn that, that no into a yes today. Oh, awesome. Well, All right. I made it past half. I'll live with you that. You definitely did. You were pretty close, actually. <laughs> yeah, man. It's okay to be scared, and it's okay to have reservations, but in that sense of checking your nose, it's like, where's that coming from? Mm -hmm. Trying to keep that yeah, more present in all of my decisions, whether they're for myself or for my family. Every single time someone comes to that waterfall for a climb, it's gonna look and feel different. Yeah, I mean, that itself is probably a really great metaphor for being a caregiver for someone with Down syndrome. Like, it's the same goal, but it's gonna look completely different because every child is so unique. Encouraging my daughter to go experience something new for Raven to have her own experience. It can't be full of my fears and my apprehensions. <laughs>